In August of 1991, the Empire Sports Network began one of the first of many shows to originate from its studios, Fan Forum. The brainchild of then-GM Rich Bradley, the show featured a simple set and a simple premise. Fan Forum just originated out of the actual name of the show. Uh, we wanted a show that uh, would provide a forum to the fans of Western and Central New York that they could call in, they could talk about uh, sports, any topic they wanted for ended up being a two-hour show, but originally it was just a half-an-hour show. So, thus the name Fan Forum. Art Wander, who was still working at WGKT, which is a, a small AM station in town, and was just starting to develop a following, uh, was tabbed to be the host of a show in which, not that he would just take phone calls, but that he would also work a small studio audience. And um, it was small. Uh, there were nights there was four to five people in a studio audience and then those people would be asked to hang out and um, stay for the Bill Polian show. It was a uh, studio show with a live audience and I would ask uh, the callers uh, a lot of questions and then uh, uh, respond to them or they could offer their comments and I just started to doing the show and I had, I, funny thing is I had uh, sort of prescription lenses and I posed a problem for the production crew. He said, gee whiz, we're getting reflections. They could not see my beautiful face because all they saw was the reflections of the camera. After a short stint as the show's host, Art Wander left to pursue a full-time radio show. The network's new executive producer, Bob Kaczynski, replaced Art with Jerry Azar, who served as the show's host for the rest of its first season. About fall of 92, Bob Kaczynski took over the show. And when Bob took over the show, we made another change. Uh, originally, the set for the show was nothing but walls that were painted black in an old Adelphia studio. And that was the background. Uh, in fall of 92, we actually invested money and uh, got a, a professional set and that's what we used for fan forum and we also introduced guests into the show live studio guests or before they were on the phone now they were live in studio so they could interact with the callers who were calling in in the years that we had guests on fan forum it was exciting from the standpoint of being suspenseful and that you never knew if your guest was going to show up it was a live show seven o'clock you know we were begging and pleading with people from week to week to week to show up you know, maybe for a gift certificate or something to come into a half hour with us. So, literally at two minutes to seven, if the guest wasn't there, you weren't sure if you were going to have a guest. Did you mention the guest when you come on and do the open before you go to commercial break? Because will that guest be there when you come out of the commercial? And there was a couple of times where the guest was not there. Our guest in studio was to be Brian Blessing, but we saw him live from Rich Stadium uh, with WIVB about ten minutes ago. I don't think Brian, unless he's wearing a jetpack, We'll make it here for the show, but I'm here to take it. In the early days, a lot of people hadn't found us yet. Uh, we're not where we are today. Uh, you know, we were giving people gift certificates for coming on the show or a bottle of salad dressing from the Palos or whatever. So uh, I had to rely on friendship a lot to get people to come in on a regular basis and do the show. But then once we found, people found the show, I started getting solicited by local media members to come on a lot. The show began to flourish over the next few years as many local media personalities made regular appearances, some of which who would later go on to join the staff of the network on a full-time basis. On March 29, 1995, the Canisius College Golden Griffs found themselves in the semifinals of the NIT tournament at Madison Square Garden. For the first time, the Empire Sports Network used remote production technology to bring live guests into the studio. We did some interviews. Uh, Bill Raftery, who was the uh, analyst, uh, came on with us, I believe, live. We did the commissioner of the NIT, and it was pretty cool. We had done all these live interviews from the site. We did the box in a box, uh, which was the type of things we hadn't really done in the past. And that kind of gave me the idea that, hey, we could do this on a daily basis, and we could do this more than a half an hour. And, came up with the idea of Fan TV and pitched that idea to John Regas and he loved the idea and so if nothing else Fan Forum was responsible for evolving into what is now Fan TV. In the fall of 1995 after a short summer hiatus Fan Forum hit the airwaves again this time with stronger resources and a new location. In the fall of 95 we decided to take the show out to the stadium 
because the Marv Levy show was already being done out at Rich Stadium. And that was a good move. We decided to lengthen the show. We added regulars. Uh, one of the first regulars was Art came back uh, from then GR Radio, and he uh, would do a half hour with me. And then we added Vic Carucci during football, and Vic, Vic would end up doing uh, an hour with me. Uh, that would turn into Danny Gare during the hockey season. So the show was not just let's take phone calls and open it up and whatever people want to talk about. We could do that with Art, and I was doing that with myself. But when we added Vic, who was very much a Bills insider, and Danny Gare, who was very much a Sabres insider, um, the show became much more.